Hey folks, how's it going? Thanks for checking the video out. I want to continue my, I guess, everything you need to know about something in Logic Pro series um, with groups, because groups are interesting. Groups have a little more to them than first meets the eye, and they're incredibly useful. In the same way as buses and stacks kind of allow us to do a specific thing, groups are kind of like a way of doing that but a little bit more, but also a little bit less. I'm rambling. Let's just take a look at how we engage groups, what we can do with groups, and how we can use them to edit multi-tracks, edit loads of flex time at the same time across tracks, and do a load of stuff. Let's check it out. So first of all, um, I can't see my groups at the moment, and that's by design, because I want to show you how to bring them up if they're not up. So we just go to any track in the mixer, any track, doesn't matter which one control and click in a bit of free space and go to channel strip components and you'll see group has not got a tick next to it well let's change that let's put a tick next to it hey presto we've now got some groups and i've previously put all my drums to a drum group which was good of me so the way that you do that is you can select all of your channels that you want to add to that group but let's come back a little bit why do you want to do that groups are a great way first of all of adjusting levels sends mutes kind of different parameters of a load of channels at once i personally use them quite a lot for volume uh, in terms of sticking all my drums to one group so i can just bring down one fader and it'll bring down them all i'm gonna show you how to do that so you'll see that i've got these on a drums group number one drums now what i need to do is engage this groups i need to turn my groups on by pressing shift and g groups on groups off groups on groups off groups on groups off groups on and you can see that it's on because the yellow text illuminates somewhat now with the groups on if i go over to my group section on the left hand side here you'll see a number of things let me get rid of you so at the moment i've just got one group and this is drums this is this one here and within this group i've got a number of things that i can change i've got volume ticked which means that when i select the fader of one channel in the group and turn it down everything else turns down and everything else turns up so if i did that without the um volume engaged then it wouldn't do that i'd just move one but with it engaged it does the way that i like to kind of flip between stuff is i don't tend to do this i tend to keep everything volume activated as it were and then just quickly toggle my groups on and off that's kind of a simple way for me you'll see on the group the, the, the header here we've got a little cue and this is going to come into play in a moment when we take a look at editing you'll see that lots of these got a cue but this one hasn't got a cue the overheads haven't got a cue why is that well let's just do a couple more steps and then we'll get on to that point so I may kind of scoop between sessions here because I need to show you specific things in specific contexts. And for me personally, I don't have all those contexts open in one session. But aside from that, here I want to show you how you can edit takes and comp takes across multiple tracks at a time. And it's very simple, but you have to make sure there's a couple of check boxes checked. So here you can see we've got a drum track. Let's just take a listen to our drums. They are indeed some drums. Okay, so I've got all of these tracks in a group. You'll see over here, kick to overhead ride. They are all in a group, group number one, as we set up before. So what we need to do here is go over to our groups section over on the left-hand side, get rid of that again. And you'll see that we've got editing enabled and quantized locked audio enabled as well. So editing needs to be enabled if you're going to do this uh, this comping. Because if you don't have that enabled, then let's just go to flex for a moment. Let's turn slicing on. And by the magic of video editing, this is automatically going to be done. But actually, it takes ages. Oh, look at that. I did it really fast. Great. Okay, so you can see in some of these that the timing of some of them is a little bit different. Because I played it like a sack of spanners. So we might want to just take a little bit from that take a little bit from that take and kind of move stuff around so more on flex in a moment what we want to do then is swipe between different takes okay so let's turn flex off for a moment and this is with editing enabled okay so if we go to our 
takes for a moment. So I've just clicked the little arrow down there. What I need to do is be able to select this bit of a different take and it take effect on all the other ones. And with groups enabled, it's quite easy. Take a look at the red stuff. It's done it there as well. Can you see that? Let's take it back. Use your eyes to focus on this here. Doosh. And there we go. Although we can't like see the whole thing because the screen is finitely big, we can see that, that it's, it's taken effect there. But observe what happens if I take editing off and then do that same thing. It's not taken effect. And that is going to be an absolute nightmare. So I can't think of a possible time when you would not want to have editing enabled on groups when you're editing stuff across a multi-track set. It just makes no sense. It would make sense if you had say you had a load of instruments in a group and it wasn't just a multi-track set you actually had drums guitar bass etc all recorded at the same time and you wanted to adjust things within that group but you didn't want to adjust the guitar when you were adjusting the drums i can see that that's that's a, a thing you'd want to do but if you've got it in just a multi-track set as it were so just everything recorded at the same time you're going to want that on but what is this quantized locked audio all about well it's actually quite interesting so let's turn flex back on for a moment. And in fact, let's let's go absolutely crazy. Just because I know I'm not going to use this again. Let's select all these and let's go to flatten. Bah. Okay. So I like to work on flattened audio within flex because it's a pain otherwise. So we can see that at the moment we've got a kick here, a kick here, a snare here. A kick here, a kick here, a snare here. But you can also see that aside from just these um, hit points that it's picking up from the kick and snare, it's also picking up one here, one here, one here, one here, one here. And they are kind of in between bits. And more importantly, they're symbols. So they're not that important to the overall structure of stuff. Let's reverse a little bit. When we're editing drums, we want to reference or we want to make logic uh, focus in on the kick and snare and toms, mainly. I'm, I'm talking in, in grand terms here, but mainly we do. If we tell it to take a look at the overheads as well, we're going to get all these little micro notes in there that we don't want. The quantized locked audio, you'll see that this cue disappears when I click that. And what we want to do is click on the cue for the overheads or any room mics probably um, and not have it in there. Because now you'll see, as soon as I do that, uh, if I were to select all these and I don't know, let's go and quantize them. Let's quantize them to eighth notes or quavers as we say in English. Okay, it's done it. But if we were to bring these on, you see how stuff changes. And we don't want that. We don't want it to be referencing the, the overheads. Just a nice, strong kick and snare. By the way, if you want to take a look at another video on editing drums and a bit more detail about why that's important, then uh, check it out at the top here. I never remember which side it is because I'm looking at it in reverse. It's going to be my left shoulder, that one. Take a look at that video. Okay, back onto it. Um, we can move stuff around within a group. So our group is on down here, drums, and editing quantized light audio is on as well. So if I wanted to move this kick drum, for example, so if the group was not on, we move the kick drum, Oh my God, everything's gone crazy. But if we turn the groups back on, Shift and G, then we can just select one of these and that'll move everything. Now, here's the interesting thing about Logic, which is different to Cubase. And I've started that sentence without knowing any more doors that this does it for. Basically, if you select something in Logic, let's say groups are not on, okay? I want to select my kick my rack so i'm gonna press uh command and press hit rack and then floor and then this one and then this one and then this one in cubase and probably other doors if you do that and then just move a fader down it doesn't move all of them but in logic if you move them all down it moves down all the ones that you've just selected now that is almost like grouping stuff that is kind of like grouping stuff without grouping stuff. And Logic does that really well because that makes complete sense that you would want to do that. And it does it for other things as well. It will do it for pan. It will turn these things down relatively. But also, importantly, even if I don't have my groups on, you see it's kind of grayed out a little bit. If I select all my drums now, all the regions, and then do the flex edit, well, it's done it. 
and I've not got any groups turned on. Now, if I just go back out of that and move one, it's done it, but it's not moved everything. Do you see what I mean? So just by selecting that, we've got kind of a, a faux group. We've kind of created a temporary group. And I actually think that is super, 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 super important because we're able to just temporarily create a group that allows us to do that one little thing really quickly and then jump out of the group without ever turning a group on. That's really valuable. So lots and lots of things that we're able to do with groups, but this video wouldn't be complete unless I went through absolutely everything. So we're going to do that. We're going to take all these drums and we're going to send them to bus 16, which doesn't exist, but now it does. So if I have these all selected and then turn one up, then it turns them all up. We know that. If I just have one selected and turn it up, well, it doesn't turn them all up. So these are on send number two. If I click send number two in the group, turn the group on, then just by doing that, it does all of them, which is kind of the same as that temporary group thing, which is why it's so valuable, but it doesn't cover all the bases. So I'm showing you it anyway. And you can imagine how with solo, this does the same thing. If I click solo, if I don't have solo enabled, et cetera, et cetera pretty easy to see where we're going here but one important thing is up here if we go on to something that this is what i like to do uh, i like to have none of these enabled don't have mute enabled have automation mode on have these two on and then go make default settings because for some reason every time you go on to the group it doesn't have editing and quantize lock audio enabled me personally Every time I create a group, I always want that, uh, but you might not. So it's good to know where you can make that a default if you wanted to. You can also select the members of this specific group just by going up here and selecting those and it will select all the members of that particular group. You can also say, right, let's grab this kick for a moment and let's go remove selected channel strips. So I've selected the kick. Let's take that out of the group and just check out what happens here. Boom, it's gone. But I don't want to do that. I want to add it again add selected channel strips it's kind of a simple way of doing it but you could easily just go to there and just go to no group it's it's the same difference really what you're probably seeing right now is that logic has a lot of ways of doing things that essentially achieve the same thing and to me this is because it's come on through a lot of different iterations of the application and they've gone this is really useful let's keep this oh but everyone else does this certain thing oh bung it on top everyone else does groups all right chuck it on top but do we need to because we can just select everything and then do the same thing yeah but everyone needs groups it's annoying but it means that logic to me is probably the most fully featured door i've ever used we can also do something kind of cool here so we've got um the snare snare trig and another snare in the same track stack okay if you want to know about track stacks check at the top then if we wanted to say put these in a group on their own well we've already got them in a group on their own they're already in drums okay so let's hold shift click group two. Oh, it's gone to group one and two. Oh my god that's so amazing all right so let's call that snare okay observe let's go to drums and let's turn off volume snare has got volume enabled so on the full-on drum group volume is not enabled in the group on snare it is so if i go to my kick which is in the drum group and turn this down not everything else is going to get turned down but if i go to my snare then this one this one and this one are all going to get turned down or up because i've gone up just to confuse you so we can create groups within groups or have two groups kind of running parallel which is really handy because you may want to do something to the snare as we did there we want to adjust the volume simultaneously but we don't want to do it to all the drums but in all those drums we still want to have them in that same editing group so that's kind of handy i think i've successfully covered everything that you need to know about groups there it's probably not absolutely everything but it's everything that you actually need to know and as i said with logic there's some stuff that is kind of there but you don't particularly need to know about it like hiding stuff all right i'll show you it and we can but hide let's hide that group okay brilliant nobody cares it's kind of there's loads of stuff in there that you kind of need but you can get around it a different way so if i wanted to just hide uh all of this group at the same time i'd probably just go into it and then just press Control and h and it's hidden i don't need to go into the group there to do it there's a million different ways of doing it and that's what's beautiful about logic but 
I digress. I think I've covered everything for groups there. If there's anything else that you're missing from your group's knowledge, please do let me know. And also let me know what other subjects you want me to cover in this everything you need to know about X in Logic Pro series, because I'm keen to do these. I find them valuable. I kind of learn something new every time I recover material. And hopefully you find it useful as well. I'll see you again soon. Take care.